Hello and welcome. Today we're in the new tier 7 German light cruiser, the Weimar. She is available for 8,800 doubloons and the ship was given to me by Wargaming. It's a ship I don't really like, but then again I don't like tier 7 and lower light cruisers in general. So let's go over some of the aspects of the ship later on, I'll show her in port as well. She has basically the standard type of armor that light cruisers have, and uh, she's actually a fairly slow ship as far as light cruisers are concerned. Now she does get a speed boost, but her base speed is something ends up at something like 31, 32 knots. But she does get a 15% speed boost, which does put her around 37 knots. She's still a tiny bit slower than München, without speed boost by the way, but they're roughly the same speed. Their maneuverability is also similar, but I think Weimar's... Uh, the shells feel slightly less bloaty, I guess, and easier to use as a result. Now, the ship has respectable HEDPM. Not the greatest. Her AP DPM is the main thing, but I don't know how much you want to use AP on this ship. You'll have to find the target that's broadside, and one of the issues with the ship is that her range is really limited at 14 kilometers. Oh! An Atlanta! Broadside on! This is the perfect opportunity to use AP on the ship. For the one salvo that you can do until the Atlanta's angled again. But hey, at least we got the one salvo for 10k damage. That's pretty good actually. But yeah, basically the range on the ship is limited, as is her concealment. 14 kilometer range? Yes, 14 kilometers and 11.5 kilometer concealment, uh, they don't leave much room to ambush someone, right? And because of that, it just the combination just feels a little awkward. She does get access to a scout plane, which is actually 30%. That's more than a regular scout plane. That does give you like 18 kilometer range. The problem is the scout plane only lasts for 60 seconds and then has a cooldown of like four minutes or whatever the scout plane cooldown is. Effectively, you only get a few salvos in with your scout plane and then have an absolutely enormous cooldown. So range-wise, you're really, really limited. Now, one thing I really like about the ship more than on the München is the torpedoes. She has access to two sets of torps on both sides, which means that if a cruiser, sorry, if a battleship comes around the island, well, she really doesn't want to be coming around the island when you're over there because well two sets of tarps is capable of taking out pretty much most of the battleships that you'll run across especially because they're probably already taken some damage and then she still has tarps on the other side too now her 150k he dpm doesn't seem all that great but actually for a light cruiser at the weimar doesn't suffer from one of the biggest issues that light cruisers at tier 7 do, which is HE penetration. See, some patches ago, HE penetration was basically specifically changed to screw over tier 7 light cruisers. See, battleships have 26 millimeters of armor, and regular light cruisers get 25 millimeters of HE penetration. So they can't penetrate the uh, armor of regular but the standard armor of regular battleships at tier 7. Tier 8 light cruisers though get 30 millimeters of HE pen so they don't suffer from this issue. On top of that IFHE is now 25% so even if you take IFHE you can't penetrate the standard armor of tier 8 and higher battleships. You, can't, you can never get to 32 millimeters of HE pen as a tier 7 light cruiser but because the Weimar is German she gets 38 millimeters of HE pen, which means that she doesn't have to worry about taking IFHE and she doesn't have to worry about, well, IFHE just not being good enough. So when you compare Weimar to other light cruisers at tier 7, she's actually really good. I just think that light cruisers at tier 7 in general aren't very good. Like Atlanta is, sure, she's fun to play because she's quite different. You have to play her... A lot more like you play the Colbert, or I suppose it's the other way around, but still, you play her differently. But the Weimar, you don't really play her all that differently from what you would 
normally do with your cruisers. Well, other than the <laughs> extremely limited range. But you don't really play her like crazily different. You still try to just stay away. You want to make sure no battleships look, look at you wrong. Because uh, otherwise you just go pop. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the gameplay. As you've seen so far, I've been really passive. And that's because I've played this ship of a bunch of times and um, trying to ambush battleships doesn't always go well so if possible I like to avoid it let's try some AP on the broadside of this Colorado I mean she's kind of far but at the same time oh my god 7,000 damage but you do have to keep in mind that the Colorado was basically untouched follow-up salvos will prob probably won't go above 4k even if she had kept showing broadside there because the superstructure just tends to have a lot of HP at the start, which after a few salvos just gets lost. Okay, the Caracciola's pushing. I guess we'll switch targets over to her because we don't have enough range to keep shooting at the Colorado. Now, you might have noticed that this is a tier, mostly tier 5 battle. And honestly, most of the good games I had were in this kind of a match or alternatively in a match where the enemy basically ended up rushing me and I got some tarps off around the corner. But mostly games where I survived for a long time and still had a decent match, I was top tier. But even then, it's a light cruiser so if she gets a 16mm bow, all the battleships overmatch it. There's just nothing you can do about it. And when you get up tier, like imagine this ship gets into tier 9 battles with her 14 kilometer range 16 millimeter bow basically smolensk levels of citadel protection uh, yeah super cruiser looks at you wrong and your game just ends not to mention the battleships or aircraft carriers uh, this ship is a true struggle when you're uh, when you're being up tiered but you can play around some things you probably have to play her a lot like you would play the colbert which is you kind of want to take advantage of your limited range now that does that might seem a little odd but you see if you only have 14 kilometer range that then, then even if you fire your guns if a ship is 15 kilometers away from you she can never spot you so you can use islands rather well to play around with concealment Although, CVs tend to screw with it, as we are experiencing right now. I'd really like to sit here next to the island, but it's risky, because I'm spotted because of the CV. See, only my rear turrets can fire anyway, because the island is in the way. And normally I should be unspotted, but because of the CV, well, I might as well reverse to bring all my guns to bear. Because they don't seem to be shooting me anyway. Come on, Caracciolo, can you die already? I've been shooting this guy when he has like 3k HP for so long, and he just refuses to die. Look at that. 8 shell hits, 1800 damage. I hit her with 8 shells, and she still only took 1800 damage. 6 penetrations, but somehow the damage just wasn't there. Now, this ship is a pretty decent fire starter as far as well actually any ship is concerned but again the limited range means that you have to put yourself at risk and that can backfire anyways the match we're in a five versus five the enemy is ahead in points however considering there's a gajamada there just sailing blissfully along at nine kilometers maybe we can turn the tides a little bit here because if we can take out their last destroyer we should be in a decent position to be able to hold on to our cap zones. Although it does seem likely that we're gonna lose the sea cap eventually to the Aktiabrska Revolucja. Ooh, G Gajamada's trying to be sneaky by slowing down and speeding up and stuff. Although, I, yeah, our Z31 did go down, but the Gajamada is gonna go down too. Then I have to worry about the Colorado deciding to end my ship. She fired. Let's turn away. And she missed. 
Excellent. Come on, can we start a fire? Yes, we can start a fire on the Colorado. That was seven shell hits. She did damage one, so we're obviously gonna do a follow up with HE and hopefully set her on fire again. Our Synop is fighting extremely well, or has been fighting extremely well. She's fighting a Koenig now, so I'm gonna launch my plane and try to help her. 3k HP on the Koenig. One good salvo might actually do it, although I don't think that was a good salvo. The angle was a little wrong. Yeah, <laughs> three shell hits for uh, 800 damage. Come on, we can finish the Koenig off at least. Two shell hits for 800 damage. Okay, the Ryuja did it. Well, now we're in a three versus three. The enemy still has a points lead, but we have the caps lead. And my plan here is to head over to the A cap. It does seem like the Colorado has turned around, and so I should be able to sneak into the caps on. Oh, the Octyabrska Revolution actually didn't go for the C cap. That's an interesting decision. Now, we still have a KGV, so we should probably be alright at defending the B cap for a while. But it depends on what the enemy CV does and I suppose how good the Colorado is. But my plan here is to head over to the A cap and hopefully take it. If the Colorado does decide to actually come along and somehow predicts that I'm gonna going for the A cap, well, when fighting around islands, especially close range, I still have my torpedoes which are extremely dangerous at close range to a ship like Colorado. Because, well, she's slow enough that she doesn't really have much room to dodge those torps. And I think once we take the A cap, our victory should pretty much be assured, because even if they take the B cap then, they'd have trouble taking A or C back again. And therefore, you know, as we can see by the points right now, we will win eventually. Actually, before the match even ends. Also, there's a Veza over there, next to that island. Maybe we can actually catch her. Because if we catch the Veza off guard, we might be able to get rid of the CV, which would completely cement this victory for us. Now, I haven't actually taken a single point of damage. But at any point, if the Colorado catches me unaware, Actually, even if I'm aware, it's still possible that the Colorado deletes me in a single salvo, though. Right now, I want to make sure I don't get accidentally even spotted. Uh, also, setting next to the, sitting next to this island is extremely useful. I'm really paying attention to where the CV planes are. CV just pulled back, which means that she's launching new planes. But sitting next to the island is useful because, first of all, it blocks sight from, for the CV. And second, rocket planes, for example, can't work from this angle, neither can torpedo bombers. But dive bombers obviously work even better because you don't have to put up with the AA. But since we got the cap, I guess we might as well push... Oh, there's the Vesa torpedo bombers. I think I'm gonna get like one or two salvos on the Colorado. And hopefully your turrets will be slow enough to turn that I'll get behind the island by the time she does decide to actually engage me. Ooh, 6k with AP. That's pretty good. Only 3k as a follow-up. Maybe she healed some earlier. She did get a salvo, but luckily I was able to avoid it mostly. And the... Oh, there's the Veza. I guess we'll do one more final salvo on the Colorado. That was 4k damage, but yeah, as you can see... Follow-ups haven't been anywhere near that amount of damage as the initial shot. Veza is most definitely gonna run though. It puts me in a bit of an awkward situation. Right now it's probably alright, since the Colorado is behind an island. But if I do try to chase the Veza, it's entirely possible I just... ...eat some citadels from the Colorado. I definitely have to pay attention to that. I also don't really know what ammo type to use against a Veza, because I don't know what the armor scheme of that ship is like. Now, luckily HE does seem to work, so we'll just use HE for now. But if the Veza does show side, I suppose we'll switch to AP, because the AP DPM on the ship is just way higher. I also should switch over my uh, 
I should switch sides. So I use my so I should be diagonally going the other direction. But that does mean I lose my rear turrets for a few salvos. Colorado has entered the cap. Oh, Veza is showing side now. So AP it is. It does try to strike for defending the ship, but it's not gonna work. Light cruisers are way too maneuverable. If they don't have to worry about anything else, they can pretty easily avoid uh, drops like that. Okay, maybe I'll just over Pendeveza. Maybe I should just switch back. Okay, never mind. That's a pretty decent salvo. The Colorado did get the King George, but I think we're gonna get the CV. Like, I'm pretty sure. Okay, 6k, and this is gonna be the final salvo. And that ends the game as well. This was a surprisingly good game. Then again, light cruisers tend to have great games when nobody actually shoots them. Or, I suppose, the Colorado did try to shoot me a few times. I just used WAST magic and avoided it. Still, 159k damage. Confederate, high caliber. 2817 base XP. That's amazing. But so was that Synops play, actually. And Ryuji also helped us win the game. Still though, this this is obviously the best game I had when playing this ship. But overall, uh, after playing a few of these matches, I've softened a little on the ship. Like, I don't think quite as poorly of them. I mean, tier 7 light cruisers anymore, but still. I don't think they're in a very good spot, especially when they get up tiered. When they're top tier, it's pretty alright. Depends on the ships that they fight against. Anyways, these are the captain skills that I used. Are they the best? I have no idea. They just seemed alright. The game recommended last stand, so I took last stand. Then priority target, adrenaline rush, concealment expert. And after that I was kinda... I guess... Top right gunner, because your concealment and max range are so similar to one another that it probably makes sense, because almost anything you actually fire upon is gonna be within your concealment range quite often. Uh, survivability expert would probably also be quite useful, then, uh, but I don't really know what else to take. IFHE obviously doesn't make sense, uh, so heavy HE and SAP shells also probably doesn't make sense. So I figured I'd take radio location and pyrotechnician, but I really don't know what you should go for. I suppose, yeah, survivability expert would be something to look forward to. Upgrades wise, I go for steering gears, mostly because propulsion mod isn't as important because you have a speed boost. Third slot, aiming systems, but you could go for main battery uh, turret reverse. Second slot, hydro, if you, you know, that's because I like hydro. And in the first slot, I took Main Arts Modification 1, but actually I think Spotting Aircraft Modification 1 might be more important. Because, while well, the Spotting Aircraft is a large part of your range. Like, it's, it, it actually is quite important. The anti-air on the ship is alright, but it definitely could be better for a light cruiser. Anyway, armor. 16mm bow and stern, obviously. 25mm deck and side plate. And then there's the Citadel Protection. Uh, you have the uh, so-called main belt, that's 80mm, but you also have the 30mm uh, angled deck. I don't know if that's a different armor plate to this, what you get on the Citadel itself. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the Citadel does sit a little out of the water, and it's actually pretty big, at least compared to the ship's size. So, I have definitely been Citadeled quite a few times. Not to mention that it's 30mm, which means that some battleships should be capable of overmatching it. If that actually works in internal penetrations, I don't actually know. So, if you like tier 7 light cruisers, this ship might actually be a pretty alright choice for you. I don't really like her though. And I don't like tier 7 light cruisers either. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.